In this video, I'm going to show how to solve case number two. Now, case number two is a chapter six probability question. How do I know that? Well, it comes from having a look at the questions that follow after the setup. Basically, anytime you've been, you've been given a question, whether it's a, an, an assignment question or an exam question, it's always going to be these, uh, these actual follow-up questions. And there's even a part D down here that we'll look at in a moment that tell you exactly what your focus is going to be. Now, very simply, the fact that they're asking for a probability in part B and a probability in part C and even a probability in part D, that identifies that I'm, I'm dealing with chapter 6. Now, there are some other probability chapters in your course, chapter 7, 8, 9, and so on, but uh, at, the time that this, at the time that this assignment is given, those chapters aren't being covered. So this is definitely a chapter six question. In part A, it asks me for a percentage, but in actual fact, probability can be interchanged with the words percentage and um, even the word proportion can be used to mean probability. And sometimes they're going to use the word rate. So all of these would have led me to think that I'm dealing with a probability question. Okay, so I know that I'm dealing with chapter 6, and so where do I go from here? Well, when it comes to chapter 6, there's a few different kinds of questions that you could potentially be given. Chapter 6, uh, one style of question is going to be a situation where you're given um, what's called a, a joint probability table also known as a contingency table. And a contingency table simply means that you're keeping track of <clears throat> some kind of an outcome. Either A occurs or A doesn't occur. That makes up one part of the table. That'll make up my rows. And then it could be that um, I'm also keeping track of whether or not B occurs or does not occur. And so this sort of a table keeps track of joint probabilities. In other words, what is the probability that A and B occurs? That value, like the probability for A and B both occurring at the same time, would be given here. Maybe that's uh, 30%. And then this one over here would be A and not B. And so this could be, uh, I don't know, maybe this ends up being 15%. If we were to go through all four of these different probabilities, you'd find that they come out to be 1.0. Now, we certainly weren't given this kind of a setup. We weren't given a table at all. If you're given a table, it actually makes for one of the easiest kinds of uh, Chapter 6 questions. But again, we weren't given this. Instead, what we were given is a word problem where there's no table whatsoever. Now, you'll find that in this last paragraph down here, there are some probabilities given, which we must have some, some given probabilities to start off being able to solve this. What we're going to do with these given probabilities is we're actually going to turn them into this kind of a table. Because like I said before, once you've got this sort of a table set up, it makes solving your problem really, really easy. So I'm going to walk you through how we get uh, from these probabilities here into this table format. Okay, so in order, to, uh, in order to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read through uh, the setup. We'll read through the entirety of it. And then we're going to talk about uh, what information ends up being important and what information we can, we can end up skipping. And then we'll get into our actual solution. So let me just clean this up a little bit. Get rid of all of this. All right, so I'll just start at the beginning. And actually, you're going to end up finding that a lot of this information is not, uh, not particularly useful for, uh, for us when we're trying to come up with our solution. So we're going to be able to cross out a lot of this. So in the first paragraph, it says, over the Christmas holiday, a stats professor, Dr. Bright, was enjoying some well-deserved rest once the marking from the previous semester's courses had been completed. With the snow piled high and the thermometer plummeting, he decided to stay cozy and catch up on a number of films that he hadn't seen in a long time. Okay, so, so far nothing is of any use for our solution. They're just describing what's going on. It says one of the films in his list was Moneyball, the story of how Billy Bean turned the baseball world on its head by introducing, wait for it, objective statistical analysis. This was baseball heresy and the traditional baseball world was salivating at the thought of, monu of, a, of the monumental catastrophe awaiting Billy in the Oakland days. Okay, so we really 
don't ever need to read this again or make use of any of it. They didn't give us any information there that's going to be useful for statistic analysis. All that they've mentioned is that statistics were used by a baseball team. Okay, so beyond this it says, seeing as the film was both immensely entertaining and filled with fun and practical implementation of stats, has a better movie ever been made? He decided to research the validity of the claims made in the film regarding the number of wins, the size of a team's payroll, and the impact of playing Moneyball. Okay, so let's keep track of that for a moment. He's keep, this, uh, this researcher, or this professor, Dr. Bright, is keeping track of the number of wins and the size of a team's payroll and the impact of playing Moneyball. Okay, so it appears that he's keeping track of three different things, or at least it does so far. In the movie, a Yale economics grad, Peter Brand, in real life it was actually Paul de Podesta, he didn't want his real name used in the film, and he actually went to Harvard, not Yale, spent countless hours examining reams of data about the OBA, on base average. Uh, here they say, in other words, it's a percentage. Now, um, what they're telling us is that it's actually not even an average. It's just called an average, but in actual fact, it's a percentage or it's a probability of thousands of professional, uh, professional baseball players in both the major and minor leagues. Okay, now, other than talking about, as far as this paragraph goes, other than talking about the sorts of things that we're kept track of, there is no information here that's going to help us. Um, if we're supposed to be working with any of this information, number of wins, or the size of a team's payroll, or the impact of playing Moneyball, then that's going to be given to us in actual solid values, concrete values that we can measure. And it'll also come up in the questions that we should be working with those sorts of variables. So for now, I think it's safe to say that we can also leave this paragraph behind, that there's nothing involved in that paragraph that we're ever going to need to make use of again, unless they bring it up again. Okay, so after this it says, after being highly entertained, Dr. Bright went and looked at the data since the 2002 season, the season in which the film took place, and discovered the following. Okay, so again, all that we need to know there is that um, <clears throat> this all takes place recently. So if they're ever going to ask us a question about uh, the timing of these, uh, these teams' wins and their strategies, which they're not going to, that would be the only reason we would ever want to pay attention to the 2002 season. Okay, but this last paragraph, as I mentioned at the very beginning, this is going to contain all of the useful information. Okay, so now let's have a look at it. It says, to begin with, 42% of teams now use the Moneyball approach. When they give you a percentage, they're giving you a probability. Remember how I said before that percentage is the same as probability. So 42% of the teams, of all of the teams, use the Moneyball approach. So this is a given piece of information and we're going to have to be able to record this properly. So let me uh, scroll down a little bit and show you how I would identify this sort of a thing. So first of all, I'm just going to say that um, I've been given some information and I need to be able to write this symbolically. One of the things that you'll find in chapter six is that a lot of attention is paid to how to condense statements down to just small symbolic meanings. In other words, probability is simply just written as P with whatever the probability, uh, whatever the event is that uh, follows a probability, that's going to happen inside of the brackets. Um, let me give you an example. Let's say that uh, they're talking about Moneyball approach here, using the Moneyball approach. I'm going to uh, start off by writing this out. I'm going to say the probability that Moneyball approach is used. This is going to be written from now on as the probability of M. So M means that the Moneyball approach is used. And so this whole symbol here means the probability that M, the probability that Moneyball approach is used. Now they've also told us what this is actually equals to. They've said that this is equals to 42%. But I'm not allowed to write this as a percentage. I have to write this as a proportion. In other words, when it comes to percentage, your numbers are allowed to run from 0 to 100. You can go all the way from 0 up to 
But when it comes to a proportion or a probability, probabilities go from 0 up to 1.0. 1 1.0 is really just the same as 100%. So 0 0.42 is really just the same as 42%. So this is my first given piece of information, and I've also described what it is that's actually going on, what it is that I'm, I'm trying to make a statement about. So this is my first piece of given information. You'll find in chapter 6 that one of the most important things to being able to solve a problem is being able to write down your given information properly. So let's keep, let's keep going with this. After that first sentence, it says, the league can be divided into two classes of teams, the rich, which are $100 million plus in annual payroll, and the poor. Now, I, I imagine that the question mark here simply means that um, whoever wrote this is basically commenting and they're saying how can you call a team poor when poor simply just means less than a hundred million dollars in annual payroll so it's sort of like a joke they're, they're saying that uh, you know this is a very relative term they're not really poor okay so it says with smaller payrolls in fact they go on here to uh, specifically say the smallest being the Houston Astros at just over 24 million dollars imagine describing yourself as being poor when you're bringing in 20 million dollars 24 million dollars per year okay so basically we have two groups we have um, we have the rich and the poor now it says 74 percent of the teams using the money ball strategy are poor so we're gonna need to be able to define how we write poor so I'm going to write here that the probability that a team is is poor this is going to be written as the probability of p now we don't actually know this yet this is not given to us specifically in fact, what you're going to find is that this is actually, this is one of the questions. Part A says, what percentage of teams have payrolls below 100 million? So we're eventually going to be answering this. But all that I want to do right now is just define my different variables or my different terms. So M means we use the money ball strategy. P means that we're poor. Okay, so um, that would mean that the probability that a team is uh, rich I could write this as R for rich but it's a good idea in chapter 6 to keep things as simple as possible and considering that if you're not poor then you are rich what we can say is this we can say that the complement of poor is how we're going to write rich now we also don't know this value but again, all that I'm doing here is I'm just establishing how we're going to write out our different, uh, our different statements. So we now know that uh, using the Moneyball strategy is M, being poor is P, being rich is not P, or the complement of P. And um, this allows me to write out some of the information that they actually did give me. Okay, so for example, let's, uh, let's see here. It says 74... 74% of the teams using the money ball strategy are poor. 